The first step in the story is to get permission to visit from the local landlord. It's telegraph policy to conduct interviews in English so that the quotes are accurate. The landlord tells Biswas and Banerjee that his fish farms are being plagued by dacoits, Indian English for bandits. Uh, what happened exactly in this uh, was dacoit? Then all of a sudden, mm. came in fishery, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, they are mm, mm, attacked. Attack other other uh, permission for going to the um, fishery. Yes, yes, it's cool. No problem. No problem. The further you get from Calcutta, the more Indian the English becomes. To find out what's been happening on the berries, the fish farms, they go to look for the manager, Mr. Ganguly. Mr. Ganguly, uh, you don't mind, I want to take your picture. Uh, with, uh some people and, uh, and yes. also. Sir, please, please come out. Please come out and... Uh... Oh, thank you. So, I'm ready to No problem, you may go now. No, no, no. I want to take some picture of catching of the fish and all. No problem at all. Fine. So what exactly are the problems you're facing now? The exactly problem of mm -hmm. the fishing mm -hmm. uh, of Dakaiti and mm -hmm. Ravari and, uh, and, and the hooligans problems, hooligans problems and the party problems. told me this dacoity problem. So, what is exactly the dacoity problem? Dacoity. What, 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 what incidents, if you can tell uh, me. First, in June, 29th June. 29th June. Uh, yeah. At the night, right. uh, about 9 p.m. About 9 p.m. Uh, about 9 p.m. Mm. We, uh, we take dinner mm. at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, they attacked it is in these salagors. Okay. Uh, these hut. Uh, this hut from uh, that, uh, that, that uh, side. Uh, this, uh, mm -hmm. That side. Mm -hmm. They come mm -hmm. and attacked mm -hmm. and they fired and murdered by my uncle. Still, after that, it happened again. Uh -huh, again, at the day, broad daylight. Broad daylight. At uh, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Uh -huh. okay. They attacked mm -hmm. and um, attacked. murdered. 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 Open daylight mm -hmm. in my uh, second manager. Second manager. Now the villagers go armed. To guard the fish in the berries from the attacks by dacoits, they have built lookout towers. Banerjee gets the picture that tells the whole story. Back in the newsroom, Biswas uses the Indian words berry and dacoit in his English copy. Fishery owners feel insecure from Shotik Biswas. Dateline, Gora Danga, March 5. Frequent dacoities and looting of fish from berries in the Shonarpur area has created a serious law and order problem. Tension prevails in the entire area, which is 60 berries. Dacoits armed with pipe guns, swords and sticks strike before the villagers can retaliate. For the villagers, the attacks are straight out of the Hindi movies. The official policy of India's 3,000 English language newspapers is to write in standard English. But Indian words, as in this story, are now creeping into the headlines as well. A hotel is a work stoppage. A juggie is a shack. Crores are tens of millions. A lati charge is a police baton charge. A gunny bag is a sack. Hey! 
It's been said that speakers of Indian English seem to have swallowed a dictionary. Pick up any newspaper and you'll find Indian English using words like timepiece for a watch that seem archaic to English or American ears. It borrows Indian words and combines them with English in original combinations. A newspaper walla for a man who sells newspapers. And box walla for a businessman. Indian English even links English words in unexpected ways. An Eve teaser is a man who harasses women. A mixy grinder is a food blender. One place where Indian English has been championed since the 60s is the writer's workshop led by Professor Lal. So what would you like to get some? Lal is both a teacher and a publisher of Indian English writing. In his house, he holds a weekly writer's circle to promote the use of English with an Indian flavor. Well, happy days. The years had altered him a bit, and the small Austin had been replaced by a neat Fiat. Like but all he did around the moon, us. warm, half-formed stalactites were heating up. Old, old and red, nowhere light. Dawn's Man, cold fingers on dry eyelids, senses open to a numb consciousness. Jackfruit, this golden jackfruit. The mellow cries rip the bazaar air, tight with silver flies. You Coconut were just a dream. Love was an illusion. What was reality? Was love a fantasy? The poems we've been reading tend to be a little too exact. They're written in perfect Queen's English. Why not speak uh, English as, uh, uh, as I would do with uh, any Indian? I would use Indian words in it. I'd use uh, free colloquialisms of all kinds. Our experiences actually uh, create our poems. And so are our experiences correct, pakka, British English? They are not. They are not. Then why are we using correct, pakka, British English? Most of us try to use good English uh, because we want to be accepted by people outside India also. Now, if we use a lot of Indianisms, there is a chance that many people would have to run to reference books or other textbooks and... Whenever I've tried to write, I've always had to struggle against the way I've been educated. I've always tried to express the fact that I was Indian. Are we writing English which is too pure? You use purist in a sterile way. You know, mm -hmm. it's like a laboratory which is sparkling clean and nothing can grow. Even mm -hmm. a germ, you know, penicillin. It mm -hmm. grew from dirt. So, impurity. So, in that sense, I think this English you are advocating is having more and more of uh, in, an influence and making itself more and more felt. The kind of English which is being used now largely should be altered because it's not Indian enough. And if we are Indians and we're writing in English, our English should be Indian. There should be experimentation, no doubt, in any language which wants to uh, 